so like the artists that are worried about what people are going to say and they're constantly like yeah this is what we're saying and all that shit like yeah they're going to suffer as humans they're just speaking with the mob too i don't think that they're really going to enjoy life as much if they're constantly speaking someone else's words i think the artists have been just a lot of them have just pony the fuck up and just have fun and you know love everyone tell the truth they're going to be fine like yeah you might say some offensive shit along the way but who cares Welcome to the Cosmic Keys Podcast. This is going to be your episode for September 16th to the 22nd, 2019. And today on this show, we are going to be talking with Michael Donovan. He is the host of a great podcast called Walking Home. And he's also a fashion photographer, a full-time artist, and an all-around fun person to speak with. So definitely stay tuned for our chat. We go over culture, art, we rant about Chicago, among many other things. And of course, we delve into spirituality and how it intersects with art. So stay tuned for that. But before we jump into it, we got to do our forecast. So we had the devil card last week. And, you know, when he shows up, you know, it's going to be a wild, wild ride. So, Dan, have you been feeling that devil card energy? Well, I kind of alluded to this last week, but um, right when I saw that devil card, I thought, uh oh, my vices are a bit out of control. You know, like I was saying, I was a bit off the rails, um, going out a lot, not sleeping enough, not dieting well. And maybe this is TMI, but this week I decided to smoke the rest of my weed and not buy more. <laughs> so I've been off the the ganja this week and it really has made me reflect on you know if you're i'm not knocking marijuana or cannabis um but when you do stop smoking you can't just be relaxed all the time so that tension and that energy sort of needs to be released one way or the other like i kind of find found myself craving like sweets you know it's weird it brought to my attention um the dopamine rushes that you get from stuff. And when you're not stoned all the time, you get that anxious energy and then you have to do stuff. So it actually kind of propelled me to get more of my um, personal stuff done and addressed. So it was actually a very productive and constructive week thanks to the warning from the devil card. So I didn't have any bad luck or scary demonic activity. It was more like, Hey, keep track of your vices, keep track of your habits so that you don't go off track. But um, how about you? Yeah, you know, similar in a certain way. I mean, not with the weed thing. (laughs) I don't smoke (laughs) weed very often, honestly. But what I do do is I usually have a glass of wine with dinner like every Uh night. (laughs) And um, sometimes, because I love to cook, so I'll pour myself a glass of wine while I'm cooking, but then when it comes time to eat the dinner, it's gone. So I'll just top it up a little bit. So really, sometimes I'm having two glasses of wine per day, and that is not healthy. So I've been cutting down on my wine drinking and trying to be a bit more conscious of that. And it's not something I do every day, but I definitely like to drink a little wine when I cook, and I'm a big cook. I love to cook. So um, yeah, you know, the devil card has made me a bit conscious of that, and I feel like he was a welcome presence overall this week. Yeah, it's kind of like the thing. It's like, I had a hard day at work. I deserve this bowl and this six pack or whatever. Maybe not a full six pack, but before we got the devil card, I was in that mindset. Like, I earned this. But when you cut yourself off, you got to do something with that excess energy. So I found myself, you know, like planning. This was like the first week I actually did the Virgo stuff. Really, I mean, I really I rearranged my entire studio to move in um, a new drum kit, which is arriving today. It's kind of a big deal if you're a musician, man. Like, oh, yeah. new drum kit, a man. Drum kit, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, lots of rearranging and scheduling and burning off that excess energy um, by not getting stoned or buzzed. So, well, I think this upcoming week is our last Virgo season week. Is that correct? Because the 
autumn equinox is going to be on the 23rd, which is Monday. And isn't that when Libra season kicks off? It is, yeah. And uh, we recently also had Mercury, communication planet, and Venus, love planet, both enter Libra. And Libra is uh, Venus's home turf. So even right now, as we're looking at this week ahead, it is a little less Virgo, a little bit more Libra. So... The shift has begun, and by the end of this week that we're forecasting, it will be even more of a shift. So before we get to the astrology, though, we have to pull this week's card of the week. Okay. And last time we pulled the devil card, we got it two weeks in a row, and it was kind of creepy. I hope that doesn't happen again, although... You know, this wasn't too bad of a devil card week, so maybe it'll be just more... um, abstinence from our addictions (laughs) (laughs) well are we ready to see what we end up with let's see Ooh, knight of wands we are moving on and we we had him recently okay this was the big dick energy (laughs) yes it was and it's hilarious because I, i one thing i was gonna say is i felt that last week's devil card was intimately tied to the knight of wands because it was like the knight of wands was like manic kind of like overactive and it's like hey you're like getting buzzed every night even though you're busy you're like burning it off in an unhealthy way so i felt a connection between the knight of wands and the devil and now here the knight of wands is all over again it's been a nice sandwich yeah (laughs) that's real that's crazy actually but um give us a refresher what is this card all about yeah so this card is all about confidence the knight of wands and because it's a court card it's a knight um, court cards can either be about a certain aspect of your personality coming through or they can be representing someone else in your life that you're going to be interacting with a lot this week so the knight of wands is someone who is very confident in themselves kind of a bit of an extroverted personality um, a bit of a bro i would say almost like out for a good time, doesn't really care too much about people's feelings, might even trample over people's feelings a bit, but you know is going to go far because they're just going to like smash through. They're like that those 90s Kool-Aid commercials, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the Knight of Wands. I feel like he's just like shows up and he's like, okay, the party's going to start because I'm here. He's getting all the attention. Um, people's eyes are just drawn towards him. And yeah, he's going to break a lot of stuff on his way. He's going to piss off some people, perhaps, break some hearts. But this is a fun personality to embrace when you want to be extroverted, when you want to network, when you want to get shit done. The Knight of Wands is going to catapult you towards that. Um, So... It's a fun energy to embrace, but like with the devil card, which showed up in between these guys, is it can get out of control real quick. So again, it's important to remember not to go too deep, too far into this kind of overly aggressive, perhaps, energy. Um, To enjoy it for what it is, to help it catapult you towards your goals, but to tone it down when it needs to be toned down. (laughs) Yeah, that's that's. That's really appropriate. It's funny. (laughs) The way you described that kind of made me think of our guest this week, Michael Donovan, who is kind of a bombastic character. Oh, he is totally. And very creative. And he's also a Sagittarius, if I recall. So funny how that happened. But um, yeah, I really think that the devil was here to temper the overly Knight of Wands energy. You know, it's like. If you if you take the Knight of Wands too far, you are going to just like piss people off and burn bridges or you know, be it over the top and stuff and the devil is kind of like well, I mean the devil is a warning like don't let that manic energy go too far and I'm feeling we're literally holding crystals today <laughs> cuz I'm yeah. feeling a little bit manic as we speak. We had two interviews this morning. Both were sort of choppy and annoying with the technology. And even this interview later, we'll give you the the warning that the audio is a little bit choppy. So we apologize for that. But um, that fire energy can be really, really strong. And it's like, 
how do you balance it? How do you not let it turn into the devil? So, yeah, so that's going to be the lesson of the week. So, um, yeah, keep that in mind. Embrace the positive aspects of the Knight of Wands, because if you're looking to attain those goals, get somewhere fun and new, then it can be a really good energy to um, take you through your week. So how does this card compare with what we have going on? Do we have another big week? You know, as I look at this week, it is not quite as over the top as last week. Last week, we had the Friday the 13th full moon in Pisces. So that was sort of the peak of this Virgo season action. The the axis between Virgo and Pisces is kind of like the loaves and the fishes, like the loaves being like the grains of Virgo harvest season and the fishes being like the Pisces waters. Um, But, you know, in the season of of Virgo where you're it is the harvest time it is the organizational time to move things around and prepare the Pisces full moon gives you that little psychedelic dreamy break from it all Um, so we're past that and as we enter the week on the 16th we have the moon in Aries which is very Knight of Wands so the week kicks off with that fire energy by the fact that the moon is in a fire sign Um, Not a whole lot of major planetary action on Monday or Tuesday. Tuesday, early in the morning, the moon will enter Taurus. So throughout this whole week, we are moving towards the um, fourth quarter moon. So that is when it's a half moon and it's on its way out towards the new moon since we're past the full moon. So this week and next week is more about wrapping things up. And then next week on the 23rd um, is the fall equinox when the the sun enters Libra. So we're working with this final week in Virgo season. Um, So yeah, Monday the moon's in Aries. Tuesday the moon enters Taurus. Wednesday is a very um, important day. So we have um, the planet Saturn going direct in Capricorn. So Saturn is the planet of boundaries, restrictions, responsibility, karma. Saturn is old man time. He is, anytime you want to maybe act like the Knight of Wands, just burst into the scene and go crazy with that energy, Saturn is like, hold on, slow down. You're not going anywhere until you pass through me. Saturn in Capricorn has been retrograde for a while now. And finally, he is going to stop in the sky and station direct and move forward through Capricorn. So it's important (laughs) when we think about the long term astrology, Saturn and Pluto are two kind of difficult planets. and They're both in Capricorn at the moment. In January of 2020, Saturn will be conjunct Pluto. And that's kind of like a big deal. Um, so when we think of the beginning of 2020, it's going to be kind of gnarly with that happening. And Wednesday, set by Saturn moving direct, that's heading in that direction towards that ominous and transformative conjunction that will happen in January. But yeah, Saturn direct Wednesday. So you might feel like, you know, you are more productive moving forward. You might feel in this long term span of things with Saturn being retrograde for a few months. It's not like a Mercury retrograde where everything goes crazy because Saturn is far out there. He's going retrograde and direct pretty regularly. Now that Saturn is direct, um, it's it's crunch time. It's time to to, you know, get the work done so pay attention to that on wednesday which will you know that's this is a long-term thing happening um thursday the 19th at 4 58 p.m the moon will enter gemini um moving towards that half moon that will happen on saturday but um another thing happening on friday or on thursday the 19th is action planet mars is going to trine transformative planet pluto Interesting because yesterday I did a reading with somebody who had this aspect in their chart. Um, So Mars right now is in Virgo and Saturn is in Capricorn. Both of those are Earth elements. So because they're at the same degrees in the Earth signs, 
by the layout of the zodiac that causes a trine to happen. So when a trine happens, the elements are matched up and the energy flows nicely together. So this is your <laughs> Knight of Wands energy right there. It's that bombastic Mar Martian energy but it's not just like the cocky knight of wands showing off. It's actually like deep, real, and raw energy to actually do something significant that day. So it's a very powerful day on Thursday. So tap into that. You know, Mars in Virgo, Pluto in Capricorn. It's They're in the earth element. You need to do something earthy and active. You need to make moves on Thursday. So... Pay attention to that energy on Thursday and try to make the most of that. Then on Saturday, according to this calendar, the UN International Day of Peace <laughs> is uh, the fourth quarter moon happening late at night. Or, so that's like, you know, the half moon. It's kind of a point of tension and it's making our way towards the new moon in Libra, which happens a week from then on September 28th. But um, so, yeah, we're making our way out of this lunar cycle Keep in mind that you should be wrapping things up, tying in loose ends, and getting ready for the new beginning that happens a week from Saturday. Um, another thing happening, Jupiter is squaring Neptune. So this has happened twice already in 2019. Jupiter being the planet of expansion, and it's the ruler of Sagittarius, and Neptune being the spiritual, psychedelic, visionary planet that's way out there. Jupiter and Neptune squaring each other has been a signature aspect of 2019. And honestly, it's called in spiritual things this year. That's been a common theme throughout the years. These spiritual things happening with these two spiritual planets. But they are making a hard aspect to each other. And it's like, yeah, if you're getting these visions or if you're getting this inspiration that is in the spirit realm, it's it's going to be messy and it has been messy. So Astrologers can kind of blame Neptune and Jupiter squaring in 2019 as maybe a cause of some of like the weird, messy, dreamy laziness, maybe because Neptune is kind of a lazy planet. <laughs> um, but this is the third and final hit that that will happen in 2019. Jupiter is in its home sign of Sagittarius, so that's very expansive. Good luck and um, great opportunities, and Neptune is in the waters of Pisces. So Neptune is this abstract outer planet. So, you know, this took a while to get to this exact square. So we've really been feeling this for weeks and we'll feel it for weeks going forward. But for now, this this is the exact square. And for this entire week and, you know, the week moving forward after this week, just take notes. Like, what has your spiritual life been like? What is your optimism and fantasy life been like and what has jupiter in its home sign brought to you as it squares the outer planet neptune so keep that in mind on saturday then finally um, we have communication planet mercury on sunday squaring saturn so by then the moon is entered into cancer very early on sunday morning as we get closer to the new moon, new beginning that happens on the 28th. And Mercury squaring Saturn, you know, Mercury inter interacting with Saturn is very precise and focused and good for your mental activities. With the square, it might just be like, like slamming on the brakes instead of like being precise. Saturn might be like, hold up, you're thinking crazy. You got to you got to change the way you're thinking or it could be like a big slamming on the brakes of your communication in one way or the other or your thoughts in one way or the other. So this is a little bit more of like a a, a be careful red flag aspect. It's not terrible, but if you have sort of like a crunch on your mental capacities on Sunday or if you feel like anxious energy in your mind, it's probably due to that because the Mercury is in Libra now and Saturn is still in Capricorn. So pay attention to your mind. So that's kind of it. I mean, for the Knight of Wands, I feel like the Aries moon at the beginning of the week will fire you up. And then Saturn going direct will kind of like kick you into gear and put you on a new path forward. 
and then obviously Mars trying Pluto on Thursday is is very energetic and um, yeah, it's a little bit toned down from the past couple of weeks we've had, but I, I'm liking this week as we look at it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It, it should be fun, and as long as you don't take it too far, I mean, it's it's a good time. And of course, you know, uh, the following week, starting that Monday, the 23rd, is going to be the autumn equinox, which is a really big day, especially for any pagans out there. So, you know, have fun for with that. And um, if you want, I've been sharing some YouTube videos about things you can do and activities and crafts for the autumn equinox. So you can check that out on my YouTube channel under Scarlet Ravenswood if you like some ideas for the upcoming equinox. And of course, we have our new website up for our podcast. It's Cosmic Keys Podcast. Dot com. So definitely check that out if you haven't yet. We put a lot of hard work into our website, so we'd love for you guys to check it out. And, well, we stay tuned because we have a super fun conversation coming up with Michael Donovan, um, and it should be great. So I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this week. So, again, keep in touch. Message us on Instagram. We want to hear how you're interacting with that big <laughs> knight of wands energy you were gonna say big dick i was you? gonna say he's got the big dick energy i mean he's you just look at him you gotta like google the knight of wands you know <laughs> i mean in the rider weight deck those wands are it's all wands are phallic but i mean the, the some of those wands are more than just phallic if you know what i mean yeah <laughs> so the knight of wands it's a good time enjoy it enjoy your week and stay tuned for our interview episode of Cosmic Keys, we are pleased to be speaking with photographer and artist Michael Donovan, who also hosts one of my favorite podcasts, Walking Home. Um, Michael is a fashion photographer, uh, very successful, very great work, um, lots of Instagram followers, lots of you know success. But aside from that, he hosts a podcast that covers similar topics to what we cover, so we thought, you know, we like to explore art on this show and we like to explore spirituality on this show. So we thought Michael would be the perfect guest. So welcome to Cosmic Keys. Michael, how are you doing today? I'm good. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, one of the things that I find super fun about you is uh, you've lived in a lot of great cities. And I think you actually even lived in Chicago for a while, but didn't like it. Is that correct? Yeah, I call it um, like my time in jail. It's like it felt like serving time. Yeah. Why do you say that? I'm just curious. It's like of all the cities I know you guys are there. Of all the cities I've lived, I would say it was the worst city I've ever lived in. <laughs> oh my goodness! Because we talk about Chicago a fair bit <laughs> since that's where we're located. Um, so I'd love to hear. Yeah. Um, go ahead and, and rant. I want to hear your rant on Chicago. That could be fun. <laughs> it's. Not- it's, I mean, the, the thing is, like, Chicago is, like, a good city. Like, all joking aside, it's a good city. Um, the thing that left me off was the segregation and how it's so normal over there that people just assume that it's normal. And I actually brought a buddy on uh, my pod that lives in Chicago, and he was like, yeah, just because, like, some people like to hang out with their people. Like, he's living um, uptown in a, what neighborhood is it? It's, like, traditionally, like, gay and lesbian, like, more lesbian. Um, you know, and, and he's just like, what am I thinking? It starts with an A. What's Andersonville. That? We're actually, I live pretty close to Andersonville. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. Well, I live close to it, too. I lived on um, Margate Terrace, like, off the Argyle Red Line stop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, but, you know, it's just, you know, he's like, yeah, it's just because, like, some people like to hang out around their kind of people. And I'm like, I, I get that. But, you know, I was living in, in New York, and I liked that everybody was just mixed together. I'm in L.A. now, and one of the things that drives me nuts here sometimes is that, like, I went to the Gagosian Gallery yesterday. Um, uh, I know we're going to talk about art, and so this is, like, a good part of it, too. It's like, so I went to the Gagosian Gallery. In New York, the Gagosian Gallery is in Chelsea, and it's uptown, and when you go to the openings, it's all the city. It's young artists, it's broke artists, it's rich artists, it's collectors, it's students, it's creators, it's just people that want to see new art and socialize. And over here, it's in Beverly Hills, and it looks like Beverly Hills, and it feels like Beverly Hills. And so it's like, it's not segregated the way that Chicago is. Um, but outside that, like, you know, I have some really good friends that came from Chicago and I think that the Midwest mindset, I was just talking to a buddy that has, he's from Iowa and we were talking about the Midwest mindset and like a lot of people in the Midwest don't realize that they kind of stand out compared to coastal cities. Like, you know, when someone's from the Midwest, because there's like a certain kind of, um, uh, what would I say? It's just very simple, it's very pragmatic, <laughs> you know? Yeah. More blue collar and, over here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's like very like common sense, you know. But but it's like because it's it's um, where I struggled with is the common sense makes sense, but when you're not exposed to so much more diversity, um, like thrown at your face like you would in a coastal city, the common sense is common is kind of like homogenous in a way. But that's the thing that I liked about the Midwest too is that it was so simple. Like I felt like I was home in a way. Um, like when I moved over there, I felt like, ah, oh, okay, this makes sense. Like if I grew up in Spokane, Washington, I was like, it kind of feels like that's very blue collar. It's very like, just get it done. And um, so, I, so there's a lot of parts I did like, and then it gets me about the parts that I didn't like because then I talked to other friends who had a, a completely opposite experience. They didn't see what I saw, so it's all perception, you know. And well, when you were living here, you were pursuing comedy at the time, right? Yeah. I was doing stand up in Portland and then I knew that I had to move forward. I wanted to do comedy and like really take it to the next level. I had to move to one of three cities. So there was LA, which would be just LA and it'd be film, uh, Chicago, which would be second city and which would bring me to SNL and New York, which would be stand up. And I was doing stand up, but, um, you know, I wanted to be on SNL and then also I was curious about like the film world. So I flipped three coin in my head. I was like, the last one I really wanted to be in to be realistic. And this is, I'm not, I don't mean to like, shit on the people of Chicago. I don't want this to come off like that, but the last one that I wanted, like I kind of wanted to move toward, but I wanted the SNL thing. So I wanted second city. So I flipped coins, uh, you know, heads or tails and Chicago just ended up winning out on the whole thing. And, um, you know, sometimes I wonder, like, it was just really hard. It was just a hard city for me, man. Like I, I it was a different world cause it's improv versus stand up. And, um, that was really weird working with teams and shit. So, but but like yeah, sorry, dude. If I come up as like, uh, no, we we wanted just, we wanted that kind of response, and it's funny. Like I I can complain about Chicago all day. I am from here, um, so I'm even a little bit more cynical of it. And I'm also a, a Second City Conservatory dropout, so I kind of like hate. <laughs> I don't hate the improv community. Is that like worse than a college dropout when you're a Second City dropout? <laughs> Well, it, it's it's not dropout. It's it's I got into the conservatory and then didn't make the second audition or whatever. Mm. And okay, I just I just, you know the improv community. I actually still second city dropout, like a second reject. city failure. Failure, yeah, that's a way better word. <laughs> and I'm yeah, kinda, you gotta walk around with like I was rejected by second city. Yeah, and but uh, more and more, I'm I'm. I think learning improv has was a really valuable thing, um, but I'm glad that I didn't like try to pursue it because Second City is basically like a big factory that ch- that makes its money off of selling people the dream of joining SNL. But it's so minuscule how many people actually do. Even if you like ascend to the Second City top spot, it's like there's it's it's almost there's so many like broken dreams in the second city system and it is all about the money and even when i meet like i just get really kind of annoyed by improv people because you can't 
be serious with them. They everything has to be a joke, and it's like, woo! I am an improv person. And it's like, like, can we be real for a second and not be improving? That- that's the okay so that's the thing about being on you know like as an artist about being on all the time and uh the thing about like second city or more of the improv world is that the improv world and i have mad respect for the people that can do well in the improv world but it is like the noises you made like that thing that is so improv and it's different than um stand-up where stand-up it's more like suck my dick and (laughs) it's my personality type so I can tap into the, you know, and the, the, the goofiness, but that, that goofiness is like, uh, it can only go so far. And a lot of the friends that I made out there, uh, the friends I did make that were really cool from second city, they, most of them were more suck my dick personalities. Um, but the, the goofy goofball thing is just like, I like it to a degree, but it, yeah, that was the thing that kind of like threw me off about second or about Chicago. And it was something that, like, a lot of Chicagoans do, which is um, they would kind of, like, shit on the city. And if you look at, like, New York, what's funny about New York is New York won't shit on itself. It's to the point where, like, if you look at L.A. versus New York, right? L.A., like, people in New York, if you say New Yorkers are just full of shit, they'll be like, what the fuck are you talking about? If you say L.A., people are full of, like, fake tits and... um, Instagram influencers and dumb people, people who be like, like, you know, and they'll be able to laugh it off and then move on, you know, and they'll make fun of the woo people out here. They make fun of, they're able to make fun of it and then just like move on. They don't kind of like dig themselves. But what was interesting is then you take the step down from Chicago and, and they would make fun of themselves, but they kind of like did it in a, like the, the city kind of deprecate, like does self deprecation at it, like where it's not even like healthy. Do you know what I mean? Do you guys ever notice that out there? Is that, was that just a, yeah, we have a bit of a complex because we know we're not New York. And people like it's not just, you know, Americans, like Europeans too or anyone, you know, anyone from around the world who travels to America. They always hit up New York and LA or New York and San Francisco or something like that, the coastal cities. And so few people actually stop in Chicago or think of Chicago as anything other than like a giant murder fest 24/7. <laughs> So we do have a bit of a complex because we're like, you know, we have some of the best architecture in the world. And I will say, in my view, the best boast Chicagoans can say yeah. is the architecture is stunning. Like when you think of a metropolis, I think of what Chicago looks like. And obviously, New York has skys- skyscrapers. But if I can just shit on New York for a second, it smells horrible because y'all don't have alleyways yep. to put your trash and you put it on the sidewalk and <laughs> Chicago smells great. So, <laughs> but yeah, in general, as Chicagoans, we have a I, bit of I, a complex. I, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you're right. We do shit on ourselves all the time. I, that, that's the thing is it because you, you just nailed it. Like, um, I agree a hundred percent with everything you said, the architecture and I, I learned uh, I learned my art, my foundation in art and photography. I mean, it's from all over, but a lot of it learn, I learned from the streets of – because the architecture creates a different way of light. Um, like any photographer that might be listening to this or artist, I encourage you go downtown and just chill the fuck out and hang out and move slow and look at how light moves over there. Because light is – we, we we're going to talk about spirituality and all the mixes, but I'll jump in right now and like – the whole thing about photo and graphy, right? So photo is light or God, you know, like God is light. And then graphy is the study of or, or the writing of, right? So you want to go find places with really good light. And you go downtown Chicago, and I would say of all the places, better than New York, better than what I can find. I would say um, certain times of the year, Venice has like a very special light. I can't explain it. It's kind of like the thing's kind of um, – uh, mm, it's a very glowy kind of light and people kind of shine and it's just very surreal. But Chicago itself has really, really, really good light. So as someone who is studying light or spirituality or anything, I'd say go downtown Chicago. And and that's the thing is that I think if Chicago is just kind of just pretended like Chicago doesn't or that New York doesn't exist um, and that they're not in competition because you guys aren't in competition with it. It's just too completely different different percent it is a what a city is supposed to be it is a metropolis it feels like you pulled out of it's a timeless it's a timeless place for sure and um 
man, I think that there's a lot of, I learned a lot there. And that's also goes into the whole prison aspect of it. Like feeling like his prison is like, I, I was there for three years and people that I'm assuming people that are in prison for three years, learn a fucking lot about themselves. Um, a lot more than if they're in paradise. And so I think that it's a place that you can really learn, 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 learn. Um, especially as an artist, man, like there's some shit down there. Yeah. For sure. I, <clears throat> like I do, um, I do a little bit of music, a little bit of painting, and I used to. I still like have some cr- friends in the comedy and improv world, so I'm, I've still got like a toe in that world too. And the thing I notice is, it's a city where you can just like work. It's very blue collar, and, and it's pretty cheap to live here. And there yeah. are a lot of institutions that you can learn from, but it's like once you get the work done it becomes, like you said, a prison and it's time to move on to New York or LA to really be in like that artistic world in a way. And all the people that I've seen over, you know, I've caught, it's funny, it's been about three years that I've been in this like creative community in Chicago. And it that's about the time it takes for people to like work their ass off, network their ass off, and then they all moved to LA or New York right after. And I, I, I'm not necessarily like against that process. Um, I'm just from here and I'm, my family's here and I, I really do like the city and I don't plan on leaving anytime soon. And I'm not, a di- I'm not, I'm, I'm not diehard trying to make it as, you know, as being a full-time artist or whatever. I just do it sort of leisurely at this point, but, uh, but yeah, it's very working and training centric and then once you finish that training you you get out yeah i think if if people looked at it um if chicagoans looked at it similar to how detroit looks at itself i don't think i think for a while detroit kind of looked towards chicago and we were like we're not chicago like a lot of cities have that like i lived in portland portland wasn't seattle you know i grew up in spokane spokane's not it's not seattle it's not portland it's not boise you know different cities have that people in la will sometimes be like we're not new york New York would have uh, kind of like, well, we're not, we're not London, we're not Tokyo, we're fucking New York, bitches, and that I feel like Detroit is on it too, where they're probably no longer comparing themselves with Toronto and Chicago, and I think that that goes into, you know, if you take it from the city itself, it's like the city just cities, the city isn't doing anything, um, it's the people in the city, and it's the the conversation that people are having with each other, and you know, like I just watched this stupid thing this you know now this the like a uh, political bullshit thing um and they have this stupid thing about hey you're not supposed to say hey you guys now i say hey you it guys and i'm women, a woman so uh, more <laughs> yeah yeah i mean they they kind of brought up the point they were like you can you can it's still but maybe just reconsider and i get it like i like to say hey bitches i like to say what's up retards what's up faggots like i like to say all the shit that will offend people anyway um, especially with friends because like you can't do that and I'm like well I kind of just did and I'm like well you can't say that word you can't say that you can't say faggot I'm like well I was a lot as a kid I was straight but I was called it so it's my fucking word too like I had to deal with that shit so fuck off um, so anyway where is it going with this now this thing fuck I lost it all god damn it sorry <laughs> lost where my train of thought well, oh, oh the- it goes into like the, 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 the words and so it's like sorry uh, it, it just goes into the words and it's like if people are having conversations and you kind of like up the conversation so if they're like dissing on the city that they live in whether you know there's there's somebody that's living in cleveland right now like we're not chicago or somewhere like fucking milwaukee right that's listening to this and they hear their friends say well we're not this and it's like fucking pony the fuck up and just either tell them to stop that or raise the word or increase the words you know what i mean like they can still say we're not that but it doesn't have to be a bad thing you know hey guys doesn't have to be a bad thing like you said scarlet like you use the word right yeah and it's like you don't turn it into like well this is making me the woman less of a woman yeah i think i'm very much well being bringing it back to like astrology (laughs) you know like i'm the ultimate libra where i'm all about balance So I'm always like trying to, you know, be the mid ground between all kind of factions of ideas and thoughts and everything and trying to bring people together. And and I definitely think this huge, like in a way, fake fight that we're all having as a society right now 
um, is impeding a lot of artistic pursuits. And that's something I'd be curious to ask you too, since you are a photographer and, um, you know, Dan's an artist and, and I do kind of artistic stuff occasionally. And sometimes, you know, we were talking about how do we create art if we're also worrying about offending people <laughs> or we can't be successful unless we put on, you know, unless we go down a specific path that has been set by society that we have to go down and we can't stray and we can't do this and that. I think it can constrict artists and of course comedians and that's like the new thing nowadays where people are critiquing like J Dave Chappelle's special and stuff like that where um where the arts are really kind of getting a beating right now when it comes to society and um people are kind of trying to say what comedians can or cannot say what artists can or cannot do and at a certain point even though their intentions might be good it probably is also stifling you know, creativity in general. Hey man, I agree with that. I, but I think, I think that, I think it's over. I think at least for me, it's over. I don't care if it's over for other people. Everybody has to sort it out on their own and that's not to be selfish, but I've tried to help other people and help them see the light for years. Like the Chappelle, uh, special that you brought up, uh, a lot of the stuff, not the, those exact words, but I've been saying this stuff, whether off the podcast or wherever for a little while now. And it's, been driving me fucking nuts that I, I couldn't just say truth. I couldn't speak truth. And, you know, you kind of watch the pendulum swing and it went really hard. Um, you know, it was like a little messy and then Me Too came around and that cleaned out like a lot of just the uh, shitholery um, and kind of made things a little better and kind of pointed the light in the right direction to a degree. And then, you know, at the same time, I was telling a lot of friends, <laughs> I fuck with like all my female friends. Like, you know, you guys could have handled that Me Too thing a little better. And I get into this thing about how, you know, like there were women that were saying, well, this destroys men's lives that are innocent. It doesn't matter. And you guys should probably disagree with that. You guys should talk about due process and blah, 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 because it's going to end up hurting you. And it, what it ended up happening is it ended up hurting them. Like there was a study that came out and said that 20% of men in offices don't want to hire women and they don't want to be in the same room as women now because they don't want to be followed accused of something and then you know people are saying well those are 20 percent. those are shitty men it's like well there's probably some of them were shitty men but there's also probably some that just don't want to be falsely accused of something because and when they hear the everybody saying well you're you're going to be falsely accused and it doesn't matter if you are or you're not because we're going to try to fix this for every woman it's like well i think any any smart man we want to get this thing fixed but we also don't want to like innocent bystanders being pulled into this whole thing. So I think that things are like, you know, moving back. I think that the Zizan Zari special was really good. It kind of, um, it, you know, he was kind of, I don't know if you saw that one, but he was kind of dodging it. He's like, I'm really sorry. I'm really, you know, like, we're just going to talk a little quiet now. We're going to calm down. I'm sorry for what I've done. And I, I just, and it, it was really like a beaten man off of something that he was almost lost in the, in the whole thing. And then you look at the Chappelle, uh, special and it was like fuck off like fuck off you know he stood his ground and then you look at the Bill Burr Paper Tiger special that came out yeah I just and watched that last that night it was the, <laughs> it's good yeah 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 and you can see that it was the yeah, pendulum yeah. swinging back it's like okay we're moving back and we're not gonna you know it, it doesn't it, it, people say history repeats itself it doesn't it kind of rhymes it kind of it moves around a little bit we're not going to repeat the same shit that we did before. We've definitely, I, I hope that we all learned something here. <laughs> you know, I hope that we walked away with some new growth, but, um, I think that for artists to go back into what you were asking or talking about, it's like really good artists will, how do I explain it? Like I had Ali Smith on my podcast and she said something about how with me personally, with my, as Michael Donovan, um, you know, a lot of our friends are very big commercial people, you know, like a lot of my friends are good commercial photographers and makeup artists and hairstylists and stylists. They work on major projects and I work on a few here and there, but not at the level that these friends are doing. And, and that's because I'm more of an artist than a commercial per person. I do commercial work, but I do, I focus on art and we're a different breed. And if the times are cool with what I'm doing, we're good. If the times aren't cool, I'm not going to be doing well financially during that time based off of the art, you know? So 
for those of us that are in this boat where we just like see right through it, long term, our careers are are a lot better because you know the term you don't make as much money up front, but then you make more money toward the end and you get more movement with your art if money is like important to you. But you you end up um, just saying speaking truth all the time, so it just it works for you. It doesn't work right away, but eventually people realize you're just going to speak truth no matter what, and they can jump on board with it. But so like the artists that are worried about what people are going to say and they're constantly like, yeah, this is what we're saying and all that shit. Like, yeah, they're going to suffer as humans because not speaking truth. They're just speaking with the mob and um, or speaking what's popular, which is fair. But they're not going to I don't think that they're really going to enjoy life as much if they're constantly, you know, speaking someone else's words. And I don't know. I don't know, man. I think that artists that they just a lot of them they just pony the fuck up and just have fun and you know love everyone, tell the truth. They're gonna be fine. Like, yeah, you might say some offensive shit along the way, but who cares? Like, people are gonna. We've learned people are gonna get offended regardless of whatever you say. Like, do you see the 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 video of the little boys just, like hugging in the street, and then someone says it's racist that uh, because little boys are hugging in the street. <laughs> I haven't like, seen that. Yeah. I'll have to find that later. But yeah, no, yeah. it's, I think probably the biggest issue is that, I mean, the, with the Me Too movement in general, like, mm-hmm. obviously, I think there was a lot that was building up towards it. So I'm glad it got released. But like any movement, it's always the loudest, most extreme voices that drive the agenda. So your average, you know, Me Too supporter, like, of course, I support women for speaking out against, you know, real sexual assault. I want that to happen, of course. But at the same time, they're not listening to me. (laughs) They're listening to the people on Twitter or the people ranting. So I think it's it's not just the Me Too movement. It's really (laughs) the majority of any political or controversy. They're always going to go to the most extreme versions and miss out the people who really just, you know, have good intentions and are trying to make the world a better place and they don't get listened to. It's just the extremes. So that's just kind of an unfortunate reality totally. that we live into now. Well, that's that's the thing where artists can can move with that, right? So they're going to listen to the most extreme voices. And we know that, like, um, you know, authenticity was kind of the thing for, like, the past, what, like, eight or nine years or something. Mm-hmm. And we all knew that it wasn't authentic. Like there was a part that was authentic, but a lot of the authenticity was just bullshit. But if you do extreme truth and extreme love, um, you'll be fine. You no, know, and like we'll be fine. They'll listen to your voice if you just speak extreme truth. We all know there's a handful of podcasters and artists that are out there that are the truth, and that's why we love them. And of course, people are going to try to destroy them or try to. Uh, pre- but fuck that man people that tell the truth and people that like just love others like genuinely love others and will will joke around and they well, this might hurt somebody or whatever but we're all hurting in one way or another um <laughs> you know like come on strengthen up we're in war here you know when i think about it though maybe kind of bringing it even back to spirituality i think part of the problem is that nowadays people are so listless they don't really feel like they have a sense of purpose you know I feel like consumerism and is the main cultural identity right now. And so people tag on to or glom onto these political parties or ways of thinking and just fight each other because the one thing that we all have nowadays is cheap entertainment. Like something that we as a people didn't used to have. We used to like have our homes and our communities with like extended relatives and like towns where you actually knew people's names like I lived in Chicago for six years I've never met one of my neighbors you know maybe that's on on me maybe that's my bad but we don't have community we don't have necessarily like extended family connections because we're always moving around so what we do have is um tv and netflix and youtube and all of that kind of stuff which I feel like maybe we're like projecting some of our meaning onto these platforms and that's why we get so riled up and vitriolic you know in a way about it 
because that's that's what most people have. And that's in part why, you know, me and Dan, we, we look towards tarot and astrology or, or even the, the occult or the esoteric arts because we're trying to find something beyond that just entertainment to kind of provide us a sense of meaning. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm curious too about your life because as an artist, I feel like art is inherently kind of spiritual in a way. Like, do you find a sense of meaning through your photography and, and your artwork? What do you think about that? And that's a tough one because I'm like literally looking at the photos that I have in front of me right now. And it's, it's like, if you saw this, you'd be like, this is the worst human being alive. It's like a bloody body in the snow, like covered in blood. <laughs> and then it's like another photo is of a friend and she, she's like with her tits out, deep throating ice cream. Um, <laughs> you know, like it's, it's, and then there's like uh, someone screaming in the streets and there's someone being tortured with like sticks in their, their neck. Like it looks like a serial killer's uh, wall. Um, you know, and I just produced this zine called Wrath and it's all, it's, you know, it's about the seven deadly sins and it's like, I was like, oh, fucking wrath. I'll start there. I'll start with revenge. Like this is, we live in a revenge culture. I'll start there. And, and I'm, I'm basically every, with over the next 18 months, I'm producing um, uh, each scene, each, each sin will become a zine, a zine um, that I'm, you can buy it right now at studiodonovan.com. Uh, <laughs> and, but the, the whole point is like, I'm just kind of walking through each of the, the sins and how we all, we all do this. And so as an individual, like spiritually, like, yeah, this shit is definitely spirit. Um, art is like one of the most spiritual forms that you can inhabit. Um, you know, you have to imagine something and then you have to learn the technique and the skill to kind of work through it. And then uh, at one point, the uh, life happens like you can't you might not technically be able to do what you want to do or you're you might not have the skill or you might a new idea might tangent might show up and it leads you astray and then opens up a whole new door and uh and then you end up the art kind of develops from that you know it's like surfing or it's like any other uh anything you know anything where you can kind of ride the wave except when you're done with it you have have something that you can show other people and that for some reason some people are not interested in showing other people and others are compelled to show like look at this thing look at this thing that came out of me like you know you begin channeling something that is it's otherworldly it's just it's like you're constantly creating flowers i was like running around be like i'm gonna make a flower i'm gonna make a bee i'm gonna make like a like i just saw the picture of a cashew did you know that cashews are fruit it's like a (laughs) seed from a fruit yeah look at it so yeah i think it's like the the whole the whole thing is a trippy spiritual movement really in it and like for myself i have this you know with the the zines i've this is like a big part of my life this is like a big transition when i realized that i will um, not focus on like commercial work will come and go you know and uh there's that element but i just want to focus on these sins that we all walk around with and that they all have their hooks in us and that puts me on this path that I don't I can't predict what the fuck is going to happen to me. You know, I can't predict what's going to I can make assumptions. I could have I have ideas, but it's like I just have to trust that good things will come from this and I'll learn a lot about myself and others and others will learn from this art in some way or another as well. And I'll have, have good conversations because I'm now suddenly talking to people about uh, gluttony and sloth and, you know, these things. So, I don't know if this all makes sense or not, um, but it's art's fucking cool, man. Like it's a good spiritual trip for sure. Yeah, when you were saying you definitely tuned into something. When you were describing your photos um, with like blood and deep throating ice cream, <laughs> and, and but like the the you're like, well, that's you kind of started off by being like, well, that doesn't have anything to do with spirituality, but when I look at your stuff, it's like really raw and it really reminds you that we are in bodies. Like we're, we have blood, we have our five senses, we're stuck in these bodies and it's, it's really dramatic. And when you tap into that, like raw human thing, I mean, that's what the human experience is. And when you initially mentioned that too, it got me even thinking of like 
Catholicism because like how much Catholicism has, you know, Jesus on the cross, like bleeding, like that's, our, that's the symbol of the religion is like this suffering and this like incarnation that is just like so painful and tragic in so many ways, but that's like the whole reason we're here. So I think that I wouldn't downplay like the, whether it's, and especially with the seven deadly sins, because everybody has, has dealt with one of those seven, like constantly throughout their lives. Cause it's part of being human. So it's just weird. It's how, yeah. It's weird how like being a human is um, so raw and just like carnal, but it's like, we're all there together. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I, the, you mentioned that it's like, a, um, you know, they dealt with it throughout their lives, but realistically we deal with this fucking daily, hourly. You don't even realize it until you start, and then you start seeing how, you know, you're like, ah, like these things just kind of come in, you know, like you look at Instagram and that's a form of gluttony itself. Like you're just, or sloth, you're just pulling through there and then you have the envy that creeps in. Um, and then, you know, you post your picture and then you, and, uh, I mean, there's probably, you know, the people are going to comment something or they're going to like hate share and show somebody like, look at this. And, uh, you know, for wrath that they're going to like somehow find it. It's all in there, man. It's all in there. It's all in there. Like it's, it's, and part two. And, and that's a good way of looking at it about Jesus. I'm going to have to find a way to put some religion, more religion in this shit. <laughs> so maybe you know the one I really uh is really fucking with me is um is envy like how to photograph and how to illustrate because I, I can't be so literal I didn't even think about it but a lot of friends were like what about green with envy and I'm like oh I didn't even think about that one but envy is like a trippy one I feel like you could portray like I feel like a, you can I th- feel like people could really have an envious gaze like if somebody was like gazing at and just envying someone maybe you could capture that in their face i don't know well you just mentioned instagram too instagram is envy it's 100 percent envy i feel like well it's maybe all of it's everything i mean yeah so maybe even incorporating like social media in a way like i feel like with instagram when you're looking through it it is all about the body that you want to have, the stuff you want to have. And sure, you know, it can still be an avenue for creative expression. And I do like that about the platform. Um, But at the same time, yeah, I think, and, and you're awesome at Instagram. Like, by the way, you have some awesome photos up there. And, you know, I'm, I'm do okay with Instagram, but it is primarily a tool of envy. So oh, okay. Scarlet, <laughs> at least that's what immediately shit. came to my mind. <laughs> Can I give you shit, Scarlett, about your Instagram? Um, yes, Can please do. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. So I was like, I, I went and I stalked you guys a little bit yesterday for like a split second. And then I went to your Instagram and I'm like, yo, bitch needs to show her eyes. Like you have insane eyes. And I'm like, this is so corny. But I think if people just saw you look at the camera more because you have like those like green and blue um like as a photographer whenever i see people with mm-hmm. eyes like that I'm like, oh my god these are beautiful eyes like you know when you see people with like really pretty eyes um looking down and all your goddamn mm-hmm. photos <laughs> i think <laughs> well thank you that's that's nice to hear maybe i i will do that it's maybe there's something that, intimidating i think about like looking directly at a camera that kind of freaks me out i'm still getting used well, to it well i think it. this goes in, in- <laughs> in a way too because i think that i don't know man i think that people have that have you know my mom used to always do that like windows are the eyes to the soul <laughs> and um i think there's something about when like looking into a camera because you look into a camera where like this thing has no soul you know you look at it screen like it has no soul but it, and realize like it it there is a soul behind it because you have all these souls that are like peeking through each camera you know i don't know i i get where you're coming from that feels a little bit weird. I don't. I hope that doesn't come off weird. Where I'm like, you have such pretty eyes. Look at the camera. <laughs> but, but I think that you know, I, I, don't, I don't know. I, 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 people hire me to um, coach them on their social media and advise them and consult them and shit. And then sometimes when I'm seeing somebody and like you're, you're 
when people are like clearly posting pictures of themselves, because I look at Instagram as like a business, right? It's just, I'm just promoting my business. My business is my art. My art, I just want to make a living off of this so that I can just keep doing more and more of it. I don't want to be distracted with other jobs or anything like that. And I'm assuming with you guys in the podcast, you have the podcast Instagram and then and you have your personal Instagrams that you're linking to. And like the, what, what is the, that show that you run? Uh, Dan, like you, it's like, cause you have another one that has like all the posters as well. Is that my, uh, I think that's just my personal page. Shook daddy. Don't you wait, hold on a second. You have a second one. I don't need to get all like, me up. am I, do you do, you have your shows, your bands? No. Yeah. That's like my, uh, I guess my like personal page that I, I, post like flyers once in a while and i write for uh uh, arts publications so i promote that but currently i do have some flyers on my personal page are you designing those yeah and so we have our like no um i that's that's like a little uh diy like pop-up show called the (laughs) shithole and um i don't design them but that's the, the guy uh Lauren Eglund, he's he's been designing them for a while. They're kind of like, I don't know, like horror movie esque. I would say, but uh, cool man. Yeah, I I post a lot of those. Yeah, yeah, I love them too. Yeah, shout shout out to the shithole. (laughs) (laughs) Shout out to the yeah, and we're always you know, (laughs) and we're really impressed that you know you're doing such a good job of making a living from your art. You know, as a, a fashion photographer and things like that. And, and right now I, I also do like tarot reading and tarot lessons and stuff like that. And, and I also help people with their social media stuff on the side. And then I do my podcast. So I'm just kind of cobbling together various things because like you, I'm just like, I have to live for art. I can't join or rejoin the corporate world. I know that like makes me miserable. So I feel like my life and probably you too, Dan, we're like on this great quest to feel like, how can we, make a living off of art so that we can be happy and contribute to the world in a way that we find meaningful. So I'm really like amazed by the fact that you've done so well with your photography. That I think, think, but I think the thing is like the, the only reason really to do well is that, and this goes back into what we were talking about earlier about community. And, And you had said something, um, that, that, stood out to me um you said it, uh, it had nothing to do with art but you were like talk about uh uh social media and you're like i don't know my neighbor and everybody that's listening to this not everybody but i would say percent of the people listening probably don't know their neighbor too and it's like it's not social media's fault it's our fault and one of the conversations i had with a friend um one of my uh, good friends, her name is Elizabeth Portadino. She's like one of the best photographers in the world right now. I'd say that she's definitely like a top 10 photographer, like really cool shit. And she was giving me shit because, you know, I moved out to L.A. I'm having a hard time finding community out here. And um, she's like, you don't need community. You don't need community. And that's because like right now she has community. She has a worldwide global community. And but when you don't have it. It's rough. And then as an artist, the, the quicker that you can get that community, um, you guys can, you know, everybody kind of leans on each other. That's how they start being more of a business is there um, or turning it into like a, a lifestyle or a career. Because, you know, sometimes you're trying to make money off of your make a living, but then your friend like, hey, can you help me with this thing, um, this art project that I'm doing? I need a handful of people. The client will pay. And then you make a little extra cash doing that while helping another friend pay and that person starts building up and then everybody starts building on top of each other right um they borrow you for something else you borrow them something bigger they start meeting more people and it just builds and builds and builds and builds and builds and it all comes down to community and a lot of times what happens with artists is that they 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 don't really go out and meet other artists they don't go to galleries they don't go to openings they don't um go to do studio visits they don't just go and hang out some do but um, and a lot of successful artists do, but a lot of the ones that are, how do I make this work? They don't reach out and talk to others and just, you know, help help each other, prop each other up when the person's down. And um, I think that community is a major aspect to this whole thing, like a major aspect. 
to it. And I wouldn't be where I'm at if it wasn't for the community that I have. And if I want to get to where I want to get, like I have new goals for myself, I definitely want to be in galleries and um, start selling there and increase the, the cost for some of my work. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to have to go make friends. It's not going to come. I have to go make friends, um, help other people out and let everybody know what I'm working on and help them achieve their goals. You know, it wouldn't happen. In a, you can't just be I like, th- I want to have, go ahead. Well, yeah, I was, I totally agree with you on that. Um, and that's been the biggest, that's been the most difficult thing that, that I've had to deal with is, um, uh, I guess the clickiness of creative communities and feeling like um i mean like the clickiness is one thing but you know i feel like with artists everybody's a little bit psychic everybody's a little bit like everybody's really sensitive if they're doing this work they're really sort of like creatives are empathic and sensitive and stuff and when i just feel like uh other artists through like jealousy or clickiness can like really throw shade and when you're new to it it can be like, holy shit, like this, this person or this group hates me or, or I'm totally like turned off. I don't vibe with them. And then you just like burn a bridge. But now I'm like, I don't know if it's that I've grown thicker skin through it, but I give people the benefit of the doubt. And it's like, look, there's a whole lot of people out there. Maybe you've met a few bad apples along the way, but I just feel like in these, in these creative communities there's there's there is a social hierarchy and some of the people can be really like machiavellian and and at first like when i was younger i would i was just like i it made i hated everything about that but now i'm a little bit more detached and like a little bit more just like who is my tribe like who are who am i on the same level with and who can i just like you know let be i guess but but yeah the community thing is you know priceless you can't you can't really advance yourself unless there are your peers involved one way or the other well, and what you're talking to you you mentioned earlier that people end up leaving chicago it's the same reason people leave portland or people leave any city right why they leave cleveland or why they leave where because they're trying to find they you 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 go to any city and say out of you have a say you have like a small town there's a hundred people and maybe there's like three that are into arts and crafts and uh, you piss off one of them and now you have nobody and nobody understands you so you go to like the next city up and it has a thousand people and then now you have like twenty people that um, twenty to thirty people and then you work through that you know the, when you get to some place like New York where you have millions and you have the world is go it moves to new york for art they are aware that art is a big city well the thing same thing happens within say you take someone like a place like chicago which has so many artists and sometimes like it's just a matter of finding the right click you know finding because i think that clicks just happen because they just happen and and people are part of a group because they they connect on something but i so i know that feeling i know that feeling of being an outsider and not really being able to get in or having like a bad taste with a click or with a person. But I would say that's why I think that going to galleries and going to openings is so important for artists or going to shows or whatever, anything where there's other people and, um, talking to others that are artists and then just asking, like, can we hang out? Do you want to grab a drink? Can I go look at your art? And, and the thing is like, people will end up, I have a lot of friends that we had beef over the years, you know, like I looked at them or they looked at me and it was kind of like, fuck you. And, and came from envy it came from jealousy it came from all of these things where we couldn't connect because and a lot of times like i was the one that carried a lot of this stuff i carried a lot of jealousy and, and um uh you know it kept people away and then you end up later on just you know you get older people start having kids people uh, uh you know they, they kind of we all grow out of it and we realize we were just stupid and young and whatever and if you remember that whenever you're having trouble with other people well they big part is because you is uh, probably just stupid and young. And I don't mean young in terms of age, but I mean, there's a part of maturity that you, we all, each of us have to overcome. Some people overcome something when they're four and other people, it takes them until they're 40 or 50. And, um, but if you remember that, like I'm just being a fucking idiot or this person's being an idiot, but it'll be better later on. Who cares? Uh, it makes 
finding that community. Because the other thing too about the good community is that they do lift up your art too. They kind of call you out. They let you know that, you know, you're trying to do something new and fresh and then they'll say, you know, somebody else just did that. I just saw it. And they're not, they're not trying to encourage people. You mentioned earlier about, you know, being stuck on a path that people, because society kind of lays it out for us. So you can, avoid around artists that will call you out and say like you're being too much like this other person um, or you might want to be careful because it look, looks like you're falling into too much of a group not calling them out to put them down and say like you look like you sound like this other person like you need to like change that but to kind of acknowledge like hey hey that thing that you're doing here's another technique that you might want to look at or hey like uh it looks like you're trying to copy this person is that's what's happening or is it just an overlap it's like if you look up when you're done with this podcast, look up the band Blue Merle. Um, blue, spelt like blue, and then Merle, M-E-R-L-E. They, they sound exactly, the voice of the lead singer sounds exactly like Coldplay. Exactly. It sounds like a bluegrass version. <laughs> if you, you listen to it, they came out at the same time. And if you listen to it, you can imagine his friends like, dude, you sound like fucking Coldplay. But they're exactly but a blue, it's it, but I like them I love I, I'm a person who will admit to liking Coldplay and uh, but I also love Blue Merle and and it I don't know if this all makes sense if this all put together if it if it all makes sense but people have to have to to kind of help each other like his friends had to be like yo man you sound like Blue Merle but you know alright I sound like Coldplay it's like you know what I do but fuck that I am who I am we are who we are we have our own we have our own thing going on and then others it's like uh, yeah you're right you know i have been trying to become too much like coldplay and i'm not really speaking my truth you know what i mean yeah yeah definitely and it gets even weirder when you think about community in terms of kind of like the community i try and tend to go in and out of which is like the occult or witchy or like tarot community because you have to wade through a lot of weirdos to find the gems sometimes. <laughs> and there's a lot of great people who are into the same stuff. You know, I am and, and Dan is like tarot and astrology. But there's a whole lot of gatekeeping, a whole lot of oddballs that you kind of have to sift through with, find your people. And it is kind of a daunting process. And it's something that um, I've had to get more and more used to over time. So I'm really trying to make more of an effort you know usually I just kind of stick to my little online world and building my online community but this year specifically I've been trying to make more of an effort to get out there you know find my community find my people because I know in the end we can help each other out and and help each other grow both as a business or as people you know grow spiritually there's so many benefits to building that community it's just kind of a scary task when <laughs> when you're starting out. But you're totally right about how necessary it is to move forward. Well, and that's that's where you can use, like you said, it's a scary task. And it's like, so, so take the feeling of scary, right? And it's kind of in your head and it's in your body is where – that's where I feel it. Where do you feel it? Like scariness? Um, yeah, like in the yeah. pit of my stomach, I guess. Okay. Yeah. So that same area is also where like excitement goes on. Like if you're going to go on a roller coaster, it's like exciting and it's scary. It's the same exact feeling. And so if you go into it and you realize like this is actually what it is, it's really exciting. And why is it exciting? And what like that also is scary? It's because you're going to meet new people and those people are going to take you on a magic ride. You know, it's a lot of times people move away from shit because they're, oh, this is this is scary, but it's like, dude, what is it? So, cause it's a big ride and I'm going to be exhilarated. I'm going to feel exhilaration. And we're kind of, uh, taught not to feel exhilaration. You know, we're, we're kind of pushed away from exhilaration, like exhilaration and orgasms are like, Whoa, <laughs> that's a big deal. <laughs> uh, so People are cautious with them, you know, and they don't want to just like hand them out to everybody. Um, some people do. Some people are just like running around and doing it all, all the t time. But others are like, I want to be a little bit like sacred with this. And so, you know, you with finding a tribe or finding people, it's really like if you look at it like high school, you, you show up in your freshman year and say you don't know anybody. You start meeting some people and some will be your friends for life. And then a lot of them are just like you, you try them on. Um, you see how they fit. You're like, yeah, you're a friend. 
but not quite my vibe. And then you're okay with moving on to the next one. And um, until later on in high school, at least for me, that I've started to find like the people that I really jived with. And same thing like when I moved to a city or, you know, like uh, as tarot is growing on you, I would say, you know, you're the first people, yeah, you're going to find some like low hanging fruit. There's going to be one or two that might be like really fucking cool that you'll be friends with forever but there's going to be a lot, a lot of shit and like you said there's going to there's going to be a lot of frauds there's going to be a lot of weirdos there's going to be a lot of like people that are just there's going to be tunes along the way and and then you just like keep working at it and then you find the people that aren't tunes and you find the people that are like more your style and then you're going to find people that are like way too serious but they look at them they have this big career and they're successful and they've got a million followers on instagram and they're it's marianne williamson and look what she's doing and i need to be like her <laughs> and it's like no you don't like she's her and you're you and uh you'll have your success and your success will be rated by you not by, by what i would definitely say like go find those others and i mean with tarot it's it's a it's an interesting thing because there's, it seems like there's a lot of people that are really into it now seems like it's i don't know maybe it's always been like that but all the people around me are suddenly like pulling out tarot decks and reading my charts like <laughs> everywhere I go. I actually got a shirt with my birth chart printed on it so I can walk around and just find like all the wacky astrologists, you know, because there's going to be some that are going to be like <laughs> the professionals aren't really going to like, they might stop being like, hey, cool chart, like a cool shirt. And then there's going to be the ones that are like, oh my God, I knew that I was supposed to talk to you today. Like, like just so you know, there's going to be the fucking wackadoodle fucktards. And I can't wait to talk to a few of those ones, you know? <laughs> so you can find them. You'll find, find the people. Hey, the tarot decks and then people that will, just like, gave find me a great artistic idea. Yeah? What is it? <laughs> Dan, we haven't... So we haven't made, like, you know, merch yet for our podcast, the Cosmic Keys podcast. So, Dan, we should sell T-shirts that have, like, our Cosmic Keys sigil on the front. But on the back, people can pay extra to have their birth chart on it. <laughs> I like that idea. You like the idea? I think it's a funny idea. Well, we can thank Michael for that one. Yeah. You I gave was, us a good idea there. Well, I think that I, I think now that it's out there in the ether, I think the idea that I kind of have that somebody's going to have to take, and I'm sure there's going to be like two or three people to do it, then all of a sudden everybody will do it, and then it'll be annoying. But someone's got to like game the system and get it, is that people should, you know, when they do their charts or they do their tarot or whatever, they could then send them their chart like as a poster, and so they have it on their walls and then you know like you can do all this shit and have like i don't want to yeah i'll get business you can upsell you know you can sell like a 40 dollar poster it's just like it's it's worth it to have your your natal chart that's you know 16 by 20 printed out nicely on your wall um you know it's a it's a good piece for people's home it's like those little things that people can do plus it's you can tie it into like yeah reading people's um i don't know you 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 take the idea and you run with it, but I, I, I definitely think that I don't understand why more people aren't walking around with shirts of their nail charts. <laughs> so yeah, print it in the shirts, please do. Well, I, I, it was, it's funny you brought that that up because I I recent I forget which episode it was, but on your show you had uh, the astrologer Genevieve, that woman ah, basically give your chart. yeah she gave your your uh, your natal chart reading on the air, and honestly it was. It was enlightening to me the way you were reacting to to it because it's true you were you were kind of like well you're you're basically like a fortune teller or you're basically like in the same camp as like the UFO crazy people and then you're like and she was saying a lot of stuff that I really understood off the bat but you were like now you're nerding out over here I'm like oh okay I can't just drop that on people because it is nerding out so it was it was enlightening to me to hear your reactions because it's one of those things that you think everybody understands what you're talking about but most of the time they they don't yeah people people definitely I, I, the astrology world definitely has uh jargon that i mean i I mean, that's the second or third astrologist I've had on the podcast. And every time I'm like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, man. I'm a Sagittarian. What the fuck? Who are you? Sagittarius, the Capricorn rising. You're like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Now I'm already lost. Just tell me how I'm a great person and I'm fucking awesome. Just feed my ego and we're good. <laughs> tell me I'm going to have a good year. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's, 
it's funny that, I, that it, it's enlightening too because so much of astrology is sort of like um, self-affirming or just like making you feel unique as an individual and honestly that's kind of what drew me in because my chart is kind of has some hard aspects so it was in a way it's like well if I had a normal chart would I just be bored with this information and not pursue it but because I have this chart that makes me feel like such a special little snowflake it's like is that just my ego driving me into this field i don't even know <laughs> i go ways i mean the thing with like so like genevieve for example when i brought her on um we're actually supposed to meet up again because i'm going to talk to her about branding and then we want to go over that finger of the chart she's like there's just some things that i wanted to go over with you but i couldn't do it on the podcast because i wanted you to have a natural reaction because obviously i was like there's a part where i'm hamming it it up a little bit um but uh there's part of me that thinks it is bullshit and there's another part of me that thinks that there's truth to it and i can't decide and i th- for me i feel like that's a fair place to be i'd rather be i don't want to be someone's like fuck it it's not real and be like that asshole but i also don't want to be the person's like it's totally all real and i need to go to this one person and they're basically going to guide my life and um you know you see that out here in la and it's just grow um, when people have given up their whole lives to a chart, you know, versus like just go out and, you know, and then the, the opposite side of the people that are like, well, I'll never look at this stuff because it, it, po- it can't possibly be true. Any of this. So. Well, I will say that after listening to that episode, um, it, it, it got me thinking that, you know, you were kind of saying like, well, you're just doing a cold reading on me and. It got me thinking, I'm like, well, yeah, that's kind of what astrologers do because the way I look at it is like you have your personal birth chart and it's really up to you as the individual to like find meaning in it and to study it for the rest of your life and like understand what the symbolism means for you. Because even if somebody was has the identical chart to you, like you're a, someone born at the same time without a doubt, you guys are going to have different experiences and different meanings, but like whatever, say your Scorpio moon means for you is going to like turn out different than that other person. So when you think about it from like, are you just cold reading me? It's, I think of it like what I do with clients. It's like, yeah, it's kind of like we're doing detective work. And when we get a hit, we explore that more. And then you take that information and that symbolism and like, do with do with it what you want and i don't even want to be that lifelong like guide for people that's giving them all their answers it's like ultimately i want to meet with you with a client like a handful of times help them learn how to investigate their chart and then they continue to study it for the rest of their life and then our relationship is over with so it, it was just um it was interesting hearing your perspective on that episode because you know i'm still navigating these waters myself i'm still kind of new to it but and i i'm really open to the skepticism and the critiques of it too because maybe it's a little bit more common in a place like la but you know there is kind of like a predatory way that these spiritual guides can really take advantage of people and i'm kind of like like i read charts to learn more about astrology in the flesh and I don't even really want it to be my like full-time job necessarily, but I do want to get exposed to more and more charts and be like, what the hell does this all mean? And even if at some point I'm like, the conclusion I come to is astrology is fake, then I'll stop. Like I'm not, I'm not tied down to it. And I, I would be open to changing my mind about it, but all of the symbols just have always struck a chord with me. So that's kind of why I'm here. Yeah, I feel like it's like kind of like a it's like a it is an art of its own. It's like a Rorschach test. Like all art is like a Rorschach test. It's like, what does this mean to you? And then uh, certain parts of the it's like, well, this intersects with this and this is what it it kind of means. And then there's like an art to figure figuring it out and how that relates to someone else. So I don't know, man, I think that I think that they're cool. I definitely think that astrology readings are fun. Like there there's a fun element to it. I think I took some on Ventura out here and I was like, I'm going to go take some friends. Like, I always take people over there, like, especially when they're, like, kind of a little bit lost. I'm like, I know the psychics over there. They're fucking chill. They're not trying 
scam anybody. They'll just kind of put people on the right track, you know. Um, and and so I'll take them there, and they kind of have this series like I don't know what I'm gonna ask the psychic. They get all serious. It's like when people do ayahuasca, they get like, oh, what am I going to do? What do I need? I need to know. And it just gets like so fucking serious. Like, dude, just chill the fuck out. Just enjoy it, man. It's a fucking Rorschach test. The person's going to like talk to you. They're going to like hang out with you. They're going to like, you know, what are you freaking out about? Is it is it money? Is it relationships? Is it your job? Is it where you live? Uh, family, friends? What is it? It's like it's pretty common shit, you know? So the person's just going to like calm you the fuck down. Are the ones that, that jump in there they become almost like little cult leaders <laughs> i think it's interesting too because i think maybe part of the reason people are more into getting tarot and astrology readings nowadays is because people just need someone to talk to for an hour yeah you know obviously there is that spiritual component to it but you know really what are the other options? Okay, going to a therapist. And of course, as astrologers and tarot readers, we're not licensed therapists. But you're going to have a different experience when you go to a tarot reader or an astrologer than you would a therapist. But what is going to be the same is that you're going to be given an opportunity to talk to someone and get an objective opinion on how things are going on in your life, give you some advice, some guidance. And you're going to be given that space to to talk about your feelings really for for an hour or so and you'd be surprised especially with like the male clients I have that I do readings for they never get an opportunity to talk to someone for an hour about their feelings and they need that they need that in their life and maybe they don't want to burden their wife or someone with those feelings and so by getting a reading it kind of allows them to, to let it all out, how they're feeling. And then we use the cards and the symbols and the meanings and the intuition as kind of ways of forming that story in a way that can better connect with them. But it's this great opportunity to just kind of like, like, let it out. You know, we all got to let it out from time to time. And by using tarot and astrology, we're really just kind of digging into this deep psychological symbolism that's within and helping people deal with their shit is ultimately what we're doing. <laughs> I agree. I mean, that's what all this, we're all, you know, that's why the podcast is called Walking Home. Um, you know, it's we're all just walking each other home. We're all just fucking therapists. We're all helping each other out through trauma. You know, whether it's like comedians making people laugh or it's like the tarot reader or whoever. Like, we're, if you're if you're in this, like, there's a lot of jobs that we have where we're not really helping people. We just feel like we have no purpose. I think that's why a lot of people are sad is because they show up to a job and it's like, this isn't really helping anybody. This is just me filling out paperwork or whatever the hell it is that they're doing and there's an emptiness that that they have and that's why they go volunteer or or they end up leaving the corporate world and they end up doing you know our you know weird wackadoodle world like like you know we're having this conversation on a thursday in the afternoon uh you know my big concern after this is like oh, i have to move my car and, you know, it's not, I just, I just don't want to get a ticket. I need to move my car. It's not like oh, I have to fill in this paperwork and I have to drop this thing off. And, you know, we're living in a luxury world and it's because we, we're just helping people, just helping people when they're, they're a little lost. And whether it's through photographing people covered in blood in the snow or sitting down with them and showing <laughs> them a card of like the devil and it's upside down. <laughs> and it's like, but that that's not a bad thing. The devil upside. I've heard that so many times. Every time the devil, someone pulls a devil card on me, it's upside down. That's not a bad thing. It's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm like, dude, you just pulled the devil card. That's the fucking awesome card. <laughs> you don't know who you're fucking talking with. But yeah, that's the card we pulled this week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So very relevant. But I think um, we're probably about ready to wrap up because I know you need to head out soon. Um, but it was so fun talking to you. I feel like our conversation spanned so many genres and ideas and thoughts. So that's been really fun. Yeah, it's been a good conversation. I appreciate it. I'm super curious where you guys are. I, let me ask you guys this before you guys go. Uh, where do you guys see yourselves moving with um that's my alarm to move the car um where do you guys see yourselves like moving forward like into 
individually and then together with like the podcast or with your tarot like with all this shit like what are what are your guys' goals right now well i'm trying to i i have a i'm trying to do more visual art and record more music and um that's kind of the the instagram you looked at with the posters is kind of my other hustle and i'm also like a real estate agent and uber driver <laughs> doing that like scattered throughout this week as well but um for the brand you know we just recently launched the website we offer this is this is the first time that i have advertised myself as a professional astrologer online so people can people have started booking readings from the podcast website so i want to expand that and we also want to um open an online store and kind of like what you were saying, like start making merch, like posters, clothing, whatever. And I'm going to, um, ex- you know, cause I have experience with like visual art and graphic design and stuff like that. And so does Scarlet. So we want to make merch and merchandise and stuff like that. So yeah, that's kind I mean, of what I'm thinking. I got, I got big goals. I could see our podcast becoming one of the top like tarot astrology occult podcasts out there in a year or so so i'm pretty optimistic i got big goals um for it and then you know i also do yeah tarot reading and um i teach tarot to people from all over so continuing on that i think the main goal is is you know keeping it up so the you know i can live this as my life like i don't see myself going back to a corporate job i love what i do i love the podcast i love creating it i love doing readings and teaching tarot. So I'm excited about growing that and building that and continuing to live this kind of bohemian artistic lifestyle that I hope will last, you know, for the rest of my days. That's cool. Well, I like it. I like, it. I, like I like the cut of your jibs. This is, I'm excited to see you guys. <laughs> Yeah, well, it was so great to talk to you and and again, to talk to such a successful photographer. Um, It's been a really fun conversation and we'll definitely have to talk again soon. Um, I I know you need to head out, so um, we'll say goodbye, but thanks again so much and it's been great. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Michael. Thank you. All right, guys, thanks for making all the way through this episode with Michael Donovan. Thanks to Michael for being on the show. We had a few audio difficulties when we were recording. Per usual, we are still an indie podcast and everything, and I'm actually recording this outro from my iPhone. Usually I can do it from my laptop, but even my goddamn laptop is acting up, so... Can't play Mercury Retrograde this week, but um, I can still beg you to join our Patreon so that we can have better resources for this show, or you could just listen for free. We still will give it to you for free, no doubt, but um, check us out on patreon.com slash cosmic keys to join. For just $5 a month, you get our episode extensions that are a little bit more raw and a little bit more intimate and just longer in general. But other than that, make sure to also follow us on social media for all your astro updates if you want to know what's going on. Follow us on TikTok if you want ridiculous clickbait that I make by myself and sometimes with Scarlet. And... um. Thanks for being a fan of the show. Thanks for being a listener of the show. And we will talk to you all next week for next week's episode. Have a great week, guys. Take care.